Okay, here we are live. You say hi to everybody here quick. Back up a little bit in the comments. Did Cast Iron Restore and Corey Clark, Raymond, but he's not really here. Cynthia Wesley, good to see you. Rocket Caber, Debbie, Darla Allred, Handsome Stone, Jim, good to see Jim. Let's see here, that gets everybody so far. Ronald Coward, Corey Clark said hi to Fuzz Fork, nice to see you. Mistaken Reaper, howdy. Billy Lee, good to see you. Rick Stumball. Get caught back up here quick. Do, do, do hierarchy. Uh, Mrs. Rocket says to make sure that, to tell you all, she's making a hummingbird cake in the Lodge cast iron fluted cake pan tonight. Sure smells good. That sounds good. Uh, Chris Salberson. Of course, now everybody showed up at once. I'm trying to get caught back up. Cast iron with Honey Badger. Good to see you, Honey. Hey, okay, there I am, caught up again. I just bought a Duke's Mayo pan, then got hit with an $1,100 hospital bill. Took all your play money. Yeah, doctors will do that. Okay, get caught back up. Mango, good to see you. Yeah, the cat's getting bigger and bigger. You might notice that my fermentation crock back over here all of a sudden is covered with aluminum foil. Last night before I went to work, I noticed it was a little bit low on the water. You pour water in the little channel around the uh, outside of the lid to keep air out. Notice it was a little low, so I topped it off. Came back to home this morning and the water was gone. I can't imagine what happened to the water. So, now I have to keep it covered to uh, protect the water in my fermentation crock. But anyhow, today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to look at a couple of videos from a YouTuber, TikToker guy who does... Uh, cooking videos. Him and his brother, they call themselves the Food Dudes. There's Noah, who we're going to be looking at, and then there's his brother, Kyle. Now, Kyle is a fairly decent cook. He makes some you know, pretty basic, simple recipes, a lot of fast, easy sort of things, a lot of canned stuff, throw it together, make a halfway decent meal out of it. His stuff looks pretty good, but his brother, Noah, has a tendency to well, let's just flat out say it, fake his videos. And uh, there's a couple of them that are just so egregiously bad, I had to share them with you, and we'll comment on them as we go along here. See if you can figure out what's wrong with these videos. Shouldn't be too overly hard. Let's see. Hopefully this will work. I'm running StreamYards in Chrome, so the video should work right should actually have a uh, sound because it won't let you uh, share sound on a video unless you're running StreamYards in Chrome. Okay, first off is a whole chicken that he cooked in a jar. Start by taking this chicken and putting it into a mason jar, feet first. So get him in the jar. And now I have these wonderful sun-dried tomatoes I'm gonna go ahead and put Okay, there's the pause button. Whoops, that doesn't work that way. Around the entire chicken. This is gonna give it a great flavor. Now I have two entire cloves of garlic. I'm gonna put one on the back, and we're gonna put one down the throat. And then we also have regular tomato we're gonna to put down the back, and then a lime. We're gonna squeeze the juice. All right, how's the audio coming through on the uh, video? Should be going correctly, anyhow. I can hear it back through my end. 
But anyhow, so far, it's all good. Looks like just a different way of cooking chicken. Yeah, the audio's working. All right. Like I said, this is the first time I've tried to share in video, so hopefully this will work out right. But anyhow, so far, so good. He's jammed a chicken in a jar. That's a bit unusual. And he's putting in some seasonings with it, which is always a good thing. Seasoning is nice to have. So we'll get back to it. And we're going to shove that right down the front. Of course, we have a lemon as well. We're going to go ahead and squeeze that, shove it down the front. I now have these Sicilian chili peppers. This is going to add a little bit of heat to this chicken. So we're going to go ahead and throw a couple of those bad boys in there. You don't need many. Last but not least, we have a whole onion. Some extra virgin olive oil imported straight from Italy. Fill this entire jar up with extra virgin olive oil. And this is gonna give you such a great taste. Oh my gosh, you are in for a treat. Okay. Yeah, this is where things start going off the rails a bit here. Pouring a jar full of chicken, we're pouring a jar full of olive oil in there with a raw chicken. Probably not going to have the best results, but, you know, we'll wait and see. Okay, once it's full, about that much, we're going to go ahead and put the lid on. Go ahead and check this out. Wow. Yeah. This is going to be some of the best chicken you've ever had. For the next step, we're going to take this chicken and we're going to put it into a pot of boiling water. And we're going to cook this for seven hours on simmer. Okay, it's been seven hours. We're going to go ahead and... All righty. Seven hours of simmering in barely boiling water. Now, something else I have to point out, that is not a canning jar. You shouldn't do something like that with that kind of jar. It's just meant for storage. It says mason on it, but it's just meant for dry storage. The heat difference between the top and the bottom of that jar would more than likely break it. So, yeah, canning jars are tempered glass. And they're meant to take heat and pressure. This is not. That's just ordinary glass, no different than the glass in your window. And if you notice, there's something distinctly missing from this jar right now. This has been supposed to have been cook, cooking for seven hours. And there's no juice from the chicken in the jar. You can see the tomatoes down there and all the other stuff. But there isn't any chicken juice in there. Seems a little strange to me, but... Put this into our casserole dish. We take the, let the top off. And we are going to very slowly pour this out. And the chicken should come right out, guys. Yeah, you gotta coax them a little bit. Oh, it's kind of warm. Just like that. There go all the toppings. Now, a little hack for you, life hack, to get the bones off of this chicken that has been cooking for the last, oh, this is falling off, the skin's falling right off the bones. Yeah. The chicken ain't going to look like that, having been boiled in oil for seven hours. It may have been cooking for seven hours, but my guess it would be at a rotisserie at Walmart. <laughs> There's no way in hell. That chicken is going to be browned up. He jarred up a rotisserie chicken, switched it out when he did his little cut there. And there's, yeah, it's fake. I mean, this guy has decided he's going to make this video and pretend to have cooked this chicken. And there's no way in hell that he actually did. He just took a rotisserie, jar, rotisserie chicken from, you know, convenience store, Walmart, whatever and uh, jammed it in the char and pretended to, <laughs> pretended to cook it. Yeah, you guys, you guys, I mean, most of you people know how to cook. Even the ones who don't, it's pretty damn obvious. There's no way in hell you're going to brown a chicken by boiling it in oil or in water or anything. It just doesn't work that way. So we're going to go ahead and put them into a gallon Ziploc freezer bag, just like this. Okay. Oh, what he does next, this is just flat out stupid. 
So now that it's in the Ziploc bag, we are going to actually obviously Ziploc it. So zip locked. And a good hack is you squeeze this chicken up like this and all the bones are gonna come out because this thing's been cooking for seven hours. It's very, very tender, okay? Shouldn't be too hard. Um, see, the, it's already coming off the meat. You just gotta just kind of massage it. Just like this. Okay, so now we got a nice plate and we're gonna go ahead and go like this. And look at that, guys. This is the best, most efficient way to cook a chicken. And like I said, it literally takes the meat off the bone, cooked perfectly, look how moist that is. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. So go ahead and give this, a sh this recipe a shot. This is some of my favorite chicken that I, I make. It does take a little bit of time, but trust me, it's worth the wait. This chicken is something that they were gonna write stories about. So we're gonna start by- Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, some people are going to <laughs> write stories and comment about it. Yeah, don't give the guy too hard a time, but yeah, you can uh, go ahead and have a look at his at his uh, YouTube channel. He has other videos where he's done dumb things like that. But the mashing up the chicken in the bag is just utterly pointless. Yeah, you got your chicken all tore up, but you still got to go through and pick the bones out. Now, instead of having a nice whole entire chicken where you can just pick the bones out one at a time, you got to dig through the meat to try and separate the bones. Why would someone make a video like that? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of TikTok cooking videos, you know, a lot of uh, shorts on YouTube where people just make some of the most horrific stuff. But yeah, there's no sense in doing something that obviously fake and trying to pass it off as legitimate. I mean, some of the, uh, you know, weird, you know, one fabulous cooking hack type videos even though they're dumb at least they make sense you know and they're honestly doing something but this is just totally fake and yeah mango points out that's probably a giant eagle rotisserie chicken uh her and uh, this Noah and his brother are from Ohio, and so is security monitor lizard, and he recognizes their chickens. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously not the chicken that he put in the jar. back up here again yeah you know there's no way in how boiling things does not make them brown it just doesn't doesn't work that way okay anyhow he's also got one other chicken in the jar video and this one is <laughs> this one is really something See, that's the one I'm after. Hold on here, gotta get rid of this one. Remove that. Present the video file. Go through this again. Open that one up. For a treat, we're doing my famous chicken wings in a jar. So chicken wings in a jar. Over the last 20 years, it used to be you could hardly give chicken wings away. Dirt cheap, didn't cost hardly anything. Everybody wanted breasts and drumsticks. Nowadays, it's the opposite. The wings are the most expensive part of the chicken. I mean, they cost, they're the highest price bit of chicken. And this guy is just going to waste a whole bunch of them here. We'll get into this. Yeah, he's trying to go, hey, no biting you. Wake up and attack, is that it? Oh, no, I don't need you ah, clawing at my thumb. 
I think the cat drank my bourbon. He might have. Oh, yeah. What's with the cooking meat in a jar crap? I don't get it either. But he's, yeah, he's just trying to be different. He's trying to hoping his videos go viral. This will be the next big thing. But uh, yeah, they might, but it'll be for all the wrong reasons. We're just going to go ahead and take these wings and we're going to put as many as this jar can handle. Normally I get about 60 in here. Hold onion. We're going to show. 60 jars in the wing. Or 60, 60 jars in the wing. 60 wings in the jar. He's got maybe a dozen, maybe 16, I would believe. But yeah, that ain't, uh, that ain't 60 chicken wings. Shove down the front. Get a bunch of those in there. And this is a red onion. You can use any onion you want. I just think the red onion gives you a little bit better flavor for this recipe. Why is it purple? It's just called a red onion. I don't know. Then we got a lemon. We're going to squeeze the juice in there and then put the slices again, shove them down the front. And if you've never made chicken wings like this before, you are in for a treat. Of course, we have some. That much lemon peel in his uh, jar is going to make it bitter. Some salt we're going to go ahead and put in there a little bit of salt basil sweet basil we've got a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of cayenne pepper for heat screw the lid on we're going to give it a nice little little shake okay get, get all the spices down in the jar and now for the fun part we have some extra virgin olive oil imported from italy we are going to just dump this in here and fill the entire jar up with this oil and this is what makes the magic happen people right about and this is truly magical it's nearly miraculous in fact to there because we have another ingredient we're going to be adding sicilian sage take another one shove it down the back hot peppers sicilian we're going to put in there too chili oil spicy chili oil we're going to go ahead and just Put a nice amount of that in there. This stuff is really gonna bring out the flavor. And then we have this, these uh, dried tomatoes. So we're gonna fill that up, get it all sealed, close the lid, make sure it's tight. And again, turn it over so we can incorporate everything. Then we're gonna bring it over here. We're gonna put it in a pot of water. We're gonna bring this to a simmer. We're gonna hook it for five hours. Okay, it's been five hours, it's a little warm. <sighs> Go ahead and take off the top. We're gonna dump these into the jar. And now the miracle happens. I mean, this is right up there with loaves and fishes. You gotta have to use your hand to get some of them out. Look at that, guys. Cooked to perfection. Well worth the wait. Let's get them all out, and then we'll get them on a plate. And you don't really need to put any sauce on these. Question of the day is, do you guys prefer the wingy or the drummy? Somehow, after boiling this in oil, they come out nicely breaded and deep fried. I mean, that's, it's incredible. I'm a wingy guy myself, and just so you know how they're cooked, look at that. Five hours in there, mm. cooked perfectly. We'll go ahead and bust open a drummy for you. It's barbaric. Cooked perfectly. <laughs> Get some of this excess oil off there, obviously, before you eat these. Now, this is the optional. You can put some sriracha sauce on that. I like to do that. Just drizzle a little bit over the top. Gives it a little bit more flavor. Not that they need it, but... Then I got this blue cheese. I like to actually put some blue cheese crumbles on mm. top. Because blue cheese and wings just pair so good. Let me know what you like. Do you prefer blue cheese or ranch? Let me know down below. So there we go. That, that's what you get. So we got our... We got our drummies. Oh my God, do those look good. And we got our wingies. So we're just gonna go ahead and give it a bite. Let us know how you like this recipe. Again, the most efficient way to cook chicken wings. Thanks for watching. Yeah, no, it's not efficient. Let's see, get this off screen. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is obviously not cooked. You know, it wasn't cooked in the oil like that. Like how red the onions are. Yeah, after seven hours of boiling, the onions are going to turn to muck. I mean, that's just how, how it works. And, uh, yeah, it was just miraculous. You put raw chicken wings in oil, and they come out breaded. I mean, how on earth you managed to do that? I, I got to try it now. I just don't know. 
I hope it'll turn out like his, but I kind of think it won't. At least he has a nice Staub cast iron pan. Yeah, he does have some nice, you know, he's got nice cookware and all this. I mean, guy's obviously doing fairly well for himself at whatever he's doing for a living besides making fake cooking videos. But yeah, this stuff like this just drives me nuts. I mean, I don't have any claims to being a great chef or a professional cook or anything like that. But at least when I cook something, I actually make it. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll leave little mistakes in or things like that. Mostly because I don't have the time to reshoot it and I don't have the money to throw out the stuff I'm cooking and start all over again. So, uh, yeah, it could easily poison people who don't know better. It's just dangerous. Yeah, because he's not going to be bringing the internal temperature. You know, if you actually did do this, it would cook. Yeah. You know, because it's up around 200 degrees. It's not going to be quite boiling hot because you're going to lose heat through the jar. And the water is only going to get to be 212 degrees at the most. And uh, you will bring the internal temperature up eventually. The problem is it's going to take a long time to do it. And in the meantime, it's going to be just warm enough for bacteria to really thrive. So there's a good chance you could end up uh, making something that's pretty damn toxic. I like this dark side of mud. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just that this guy was driving me nuts. I've seen a few of his videos over on uh, Mango's channel. And uh, it just offended me to no end. The onions bleed right away. There isn't enough water to boil those for five hours. Yeah, the jar it probably could explode. It wouldn't build pressure because there's no seal on it. It's just a steel lid. And it's those kind of jars are made for dry storage. I mean, you put pasta in them or sugar, flour, whatever. It'll keep the cooties out of them. But you can't can with them. They're not tempered to begin with. There's no seal on the inside of the lid. So there's a pretty good ch chance if you did boil that long enough, it would break the jar. Yeah, put a few wings in a jar and set them out in the Louisiana heat in July. You'd probably better be better off. <coughs> you know, set them out on a nice hot blacktop. And uh, they probably would cook better than they would the way he did it. Yeah, and the uh, yeah, you know, he's got probably thirty bucks worth of olive oil in the jar, because yeah, that stuff ain't cheap either. Yeah, glass is often cheap and brittle; won't handle the temperature swings. Yeah, and it's going to be two hundred degrees at the bottom, but it's going to be a lot cooler on top because the jar is going to be radiating heat out of it. So you're going to end up with a big temperature difference between the top and the bottom, and that doesn't do good for glass. Or it might once or twice and then pop. Yeah, I mean, you're just uh, just begging for a, a pot full of broken glass. But anyway, like I said, uh, him, him and his brother have a channel. They call it the Food Dudes. And they do stuff like this. He does stuff like this. Uh you know, but his brother's actually a fairly decent cook. You know, they're fairly practical, you know, simple recipes. I mean, you can throw a bunch of stuff together, throw it in the oven, and away you go, and you got a decent meal. You know, and most of his stuff looks like it's pretty well edible. But, yeah, uh, Noah, for some reason, he's trying desperately to, if you're going to bite me, you ain't going to sit here. Be nice. He's got to come in and attack for no good reason. There. Ridiculous cat. Anyway. Anyway, uh, Kyle's fairly good. Noah, yeah, he's, uh, well, he's an idiot. He did a video where he took 16 sticks of butter, four pounds of butter, melted it in a pot, threw some seasoning in, and then boiled the steak for two minutes and then fried the steak. Utterly pointless. If you wanted infused butter, all you needed to do is melt down 
you know, even a half a cup would be far more than you really needed. Melt down a little butter, and uh, you'd have been fine. And he also switched out the steak again, where he switches the chicken with this. It was a different steak after he fried it than the one that he threw in the melted butter and let it boil for a couple of minutes. It's just utterly ridiculous stuff. But anyhow, uh, enough with him. I just wanted to show you guys some of these some of these silly uh, TikTok videos. There, TikTok, and he's on YouTube as well. Some of these dumb videos that this guy is doing. You're a carpenter, you've cooked on your dashboard a number of times. Oh, yeah, I've made uh, plenty of manifold soup where you have a uh, heavy machinery. You take a can of soup, stab a little hole in the top, and set it on the exhaust manifold and let it heat up on that. Or if you have sandwiches wrapped in tin foil, you can heat them up on that on exhaust manifolds. Done that fairly often. And, uh, yeah, that's an old, an old trick. But it's actually hot enough to cook things in a reasonable amount of time. Some of those Indian head pictures to lodge. Uh, didn't they already do an Indian head nickel for uh, for lodge or the buffalo nickel rather? I know they did a. Uh, they did a Walking Liberty skillet where it has the uh, the back of a Walking Liberty 50 cent piece. I could have swore they did the uh, did the Buffalo nickel too. Maybe not. I got lucky the other day. Found a one notch hammered number three lodge. Ah, cool. Yeah, I think that uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure it is the uh, hammered number five lodge that I have is a one notch lodge. Daddy will put stakes on the manifold, be ready by the time you hit the duck blind. Yeah, I mean a lot of guys. You know, it's been uh, pretty much since they started using things with engines on construction sites. You know, they heat them up on the uh, heat it up on the manifold. They did the back of the buffalo nickel, but I think by the same we need the Indian head part. Yeah, you know, it's pretty cool on both sides of it, so they could definitely do that. And maybe if you agitate them a little bit, they will. Centos engine manifold has a nice spot for the food to stay secure. Yeah, a lot of them do. A lot of the, uh, you know, big diesels on construction machinery got fairly flat spots where the exhaust manifold comes out you know it's kind of flat on top of the head and you got a nice little shelf right there where it uh doesn't fall off from the vibrations or move around fall off when you're moving the machinery around Oh, you found another Monday morning skillet? That's cool. I've I've seen pictures of them. I don't have one. I haven't actually come across a real one. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a Monday morning skillet, they were made by Martin Stoven Range. And when Martin put the logo on the bottom of their skillets, it was actually a separate plate that they would put on the bottom of the pattern and then make their forms. Because... It tends to wear around the edges of the uh, lettering, logos, things like that. It was simpler just to have a small plate that you could easily remove, easily make a new one, rather than having to rework the whole pattern. Well, apparently the casting foreman came in half drunk and hung over one Monday morning and put the plates in upside down on these skillets. 
and they made it part way through the day before somebody finally noticed, you know, hey, the logo was upside down on these skillets. So when you hang the pan on a Monday morning skillet, you can read the logo right side up. I mean, that's the way they make pans nowadays. You know, Lodge does that and a lot of others do too. But at the time, it was usually you had the handle down and the logo would be upright. And this, the logo was 180 degrees off. And why must you attack me? Be nice. I don't need to be chewed on. <laughs> uh, six drop. Yeah, Martin did the uh, did the Monday morning skillets, or they're known for it. That's BSR. Well, it might have happened with BSR too, but Martin is the one that's famous for it. Uh, is a Griswold number seven harder to come by than an eight or ten? A little bit. They're not. Uh, what is wrong with you? Huh? There. Push you off. Uh, the odd size skillets, you know, uh, six, eight, six and seven, you know, nine and ten are a little bit more common, but the odd, the off size skillets are a bit more scarce. As far as I know, Griswold sevens aren't really rare, but you do see them a bit less often than, uh, Number eights and tens. My kitten's an attention hog. Yeah, she's uh decided she wants to be violent for the moment. Uh, I have a Ben Benjamin and Medwin number ten skillet. I think it's Chinese. I'm going to lock you in the bathroom if you keep it up. <laughs> uh, anyway, Benjamin and Medwin, number 10, and I think it's Chinese. Seems to have pretty good smooth metal. Uh, your Lodge, number 10, Dutch oven, even fits on top of it. Yeah, Benjamin and Medwin, they are a Chinese brand. <sighs> no, don't attack my feet now. That's it, cat. You're out of here. Ah, you're getting banished. Banished, I tells you. There. Ah. Yeah, Benjamin Medwin is a uh, is a Chinese brand. I used to have one. I finally gave it away. They are decent skillets, a little heavy. They have a a series of concentric rings on the bottom of them, and that's fairly common among certain a, a Chinese maker. They have a bunch of concentric rings on the bottom, and then a small uh, circle in the middle, and that's where the Benjamin Medwin logo is. There's a couple other brands that have a different logo, and there's some that don't have any at all. And, uh, you know, they're decent skillets. Uh, the Benjamin and Medwin, I think I got that on the mid-90s or so. And they used to sell them at Target. I don't know if they still sell them now, but there's quite a few of them out there. And Yeah, they are decent, uh, decent skillets. You can usually pick them up pretty cheap, you know, 5 10 20 bucks for the bigger ones. But, uh, you know, they're a good skillet to, to use for an everyday using skillet. Get locked up the weed rams, Dad. Yeah, I probably should start getting her drunk before the streams. Might settle her down. I'll trade you a female cat and heat for your cat for a week. Uh, no thanks. Yeah, I'm going to find shredded toilet paper when I get in there next. She usually does fairly good in the bathroom. She doesn't uh, tear things up too bad. I uh, restored some Benjamin and Medwin 6 and 8s for a co-worker. Came out really good. 
and they're a rusty mess when I got them. Yeah, like I said, they're not a not a bad skillet, you know, and uh, they're inexpensive. So you can't, you're not going to go far wrong with one of them. Uh, the flap on your tea kettle is supposed to open. I assume it does being hinged. It's stuck pretty good. Yeah, it does. Uh, let me see if I have mine handy. I've been moving so much crap around. I can't find anything at the moment. But, I, yeah, there it is. I can get in here. Long reach to get it, but ooh, that's dusty as hell. But uh, Billy Lee just got herself a a Griswold Colonial Design Safety Fill skill or a kettle like this one. This is a five quart one, and they've got a. Let me hold this out of the way. They got a door in the spout, and yeah, it's supposed to open and it should have a little a little knob thingy like that. And the idea was. You could fill the kettle and hang on to the handle without having to open the lid and burn your hand with the steam. You just flip that open, fill up your uh, kettle, put it back on the stove. But yeah, Billy Lee got one of these. It's all dusty as hell sitting back in the corner. But that's what they look like. And uh, like I said, that's a colonial safety fill kettle. Patent date on that patented 1913. And uh, they're a fairly popular type of design. There's a couple of different makers that have that little safety fill feature on them. But yeah, once you get it uh, cleaned up, it should, the flapper should work on yours, Billy. Uh, any other fakers I've noticed out there? Uh, not so much outright fake cooking like uh noah was doing there but you do see a lot of them that are just really dumb yeah i mean you know why in the hell they make something like that and then they don't actually eat it on air either you know they'll just you know whip up you know cat food and brown water you know croquets or some damn thing and they say oh no they look delicious and then never actually take a bite of them you know, at least uh, Noah eats the food that he bought to pretend to cook with. You can make someone really sick. Yeah, I mean, you know, trying some of these recipes are a really bad idea if you don't know what you're doing. If you do know what you're doing, you'll realize, yeah, this is a really bad idea. <laughs> but safety kettles, yeah, they're... You know, they're a pretty cool little deal. I got that cheap, and one of these days I'll get around to cleaning it up. I mean, besides being dusty, you can see it's got some not really bad pitting pitting to it, but it's pretty heavily oxidized. That'll come out with a little elbow grease once I get around to doing it. It's just a, not a real high priority. Okay, you have no knob. Yeah, I saw that. It looked like the uh, the knobs were were gone on yours. Could have used that a few years ago. The safety fill. Flash steamed your hand with wood fire cast iron kettle. One a.m. half asleep. Hot glove was a hand <laughs> turning the spigot on and bare hand on the handle. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't help to uh, have the glove on the hand that you're not holding the hot thing with. I was able to come out to treat and come out with no scars or permanent damage. But yeah, that was the idea behind them is you could just flip that little door at the spout open and hold it under your spigot instead of having to open the open the big lid and steam yourself. <laughs> Let's 
so similar to your kettle here shines like new money yeah you can definitely shine up the aluminum pretty good this like i said this one is going to take some work it'll uh i'll have to sand that down get the uh get all that oxidation off there and polish it back up it takes a while but it is worthwhile i mean you can see how even in the low light here you can see how shiny those kettles back there turned out that cynthia and her tfal cookware catnip yeah uh kittens i guess don't really respond to catnip it takes a while you know usually once they're like a year and a half or so old then catnip starts working on them but kittens don't really uh don't get high on catnip i guess uh jr jir finishes good to see ya Uh, you got to Monday to do what needs to be done. Then you're out of the game for a minimum of six weeks. Well, that's a shame, but maybe you need six weeks off. It'd be good for you to take a rest and make hubby do all the work. Of course, the reason why you're off out of the game to begin with probably isn't going to be nearly that, as much fun as it sounds. Manifold soup. Oh, yeah. Manifold soup, and there's all kinds of things you can cook on an exhaust manifold, a little practice. Get caught back up here. Uh, do I have any black caps, black raspberries, or blackberries on my property? Yes, I do. I've got a uh, long edge of the driveway. I got a spot that I quit mowing and just let the blackberries take it over. Around here, pretty much any time you clear out a spot in the woods, you'll get popple slashings and blackberry brush. You know, the popples or the uh, popple trees, they'll send up shoots from the roots, especially when you cut one down. So if you go out and do a little logging, open up an area within a couple of years, You'll have tons of these saplings coming up, and the uh, the blackberries just take over. So pretty much anywhere where you quit mowing, you're likely to have blackberries around here. Black caps, technically, because when you pull them off the stem, the, the stem stays behind and the fruit pulls off. But uh, they're real good. And I made uh, made some jelly out of them last time. But I got some that I uh, that I dehydrated, but they're definitely definitely something really nice. Kind of hard to beat the birds to them once sometimes. It depends on you know how fast they ripen, and they, of course they don't ripen all at once. So I usually pick them as they come ripe and uh, and freeze them until I can do something with them. Uh, do you like black caps or true blackberries better? Uh, black caps, probably better. I do have some little bit of wild raspberries around here, but uh, they don't do. There's a few, you know, few vines here and there, but uh, nowhere near like there are with the uh, with the blackberries, the black caps anyway, and. Uh, I prefer them to raspberries. You know, raspberries, for some reason, they have kind of a, to me anyway, they have like a saccharine kind of aftertaste. You know, so I'm not really a big fan of them. I don't know if that's just me or uh, if that's actually common with, black, with raspberries. But the wild ones are, uh, are, taste a bit better than the uh, than the store bought ones uh, we got Mennonite farmhouse in here it's good to see you 
Yeah, Billy Lee was just talking about you. She trusts your cooking. I lost power listening to a desktop across the room loading your Finax issue video. I'll have to be sure and catch that. The hummingbird cake smells really good. Never tried one of that. I'll have to give that a go one of these days. Mennonite Farmhouse it was. I trust all your recipes. Yeah, I mean, usually, you know, the recipes I do are, you know, I keep them fairly basic, fairly simple. Usually it's nothing really complex. But I'll usually do a test run of them before I, before I do it on stream or film it, even if it's a recipe that I worked out myself. You know, but I'm not going to do something terribly stupid with it. You know, the, uh, you know, some of the ridiculous things that people throw together and try and pass off as cooking. Uh, Bridget Tackett, nice to see you. Uh, you fixed my recipes too. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, there's a lot of them that kind of work out for myself. You know, see something or find a recipe in a book or something that looks good and uh, modify it. Some of them I just kind of invented on my own. I'm sure somebody somewhere has done something similar, but, you know, I usually try and figure it out, give it a try and go through it. And, uh, you know, at least make it, make sure it's safe. And I actually do eat the stuff that I, that I make. Yeah. You wouldn't want anybody to waste your food. Yeah. For a while it was really bad with some of these, you know, shorts and TikTok videos where they were throwing, I mean, they would, you know, damn well, they didn't actually eat that stuff. I mean, they threw it out when they were done and they wasted 70 80 bucks worth of food just to make a minute long video and then they never actually ate the damn thing uh your little sister was able to get you some crown royal blackberry be making preserve with it blackberry boozy vanilla that'd probably be pretty good Making uh, vanilla with blackberry. Well, around here, blackberry brandy is a pretty common thing. Polish style blackberry brandy, especially because there's a lot of Polish around. <laughs> yeah, favorite recipes of mine are in jars, chicken wings, and drummies. Yeah, yeah, it's just God, that was just so damn silly. You know, and how, how do you expect anybody to actually believe that it came out breaded and browned, having been boiled in oil for seven hours? It just, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Take one look at me and you can tell no food goes to waste. Yeah, it's you know, fairly obvious that I don't, don't throw out too many, too many food items. Uh, never heard of black caps. Live in Cedar Lake, Indiana. You had dewberries and blackberries. Uh, black caps are actually a black raspberry. But the difference between a black cap and a blackberry, they're pretty much the same thing. But when you pick a blackberry, the stem comes off with it, and that little core stays inside. With black caps, when you pick them, the uh, stem and that little core stay on the vine, and you just get the the berry part of it. But pretty much everybody just calls them blackberries, regardless of what they are. So, loving this potato bread recipe. Well, I've checked that out too. Uh, I made a potato bread recipe out of that uh, 1893 uh, majestic cookbook that I've got. And that was really good, and uh, I still use it. It's a, you know, it's a uh, potato bread. Basically, you use a potato to make a uh, to make a yeast starter for your bread for the next day. All this thundering and lightning. Hope you get some mushrooms growing. Eh, it's still a bit earlier out here for 
well for anything to be growing outside it's uh i mean last sunday we got a foot of snow it's pretty much gone now it's kind of warmed up and well it's snowing again lately just enough to dust everything down but we're still uh still a good month and a half away from things starting to green up really uh, blackberries are generally larger as well as larger seeds they're technically dropules oh, okay Uh, have I tried any recipes in that cast iron book? I've read through it, but I haven't got around to uh, trying out the recipes. There's a bunch of good stuff in there. And thanks for sending that along. And uh, I'll definitely have to try some of those. I haven't done nearly as much cooking as I want to, but you never do quite nearly as many things as you want to anyway. So, but yeah, there's a bunch of really nice recipes in there that I've been meaning to meaning to try uh you made your first nana pudding banana pudding oh cool which cast iron cookbook it's uh i always had it sitting right handy but i don't have it with me now it's a uh cast iron cookbook and can't remember the exact title of it either surprised i haven't made pretzels for my viewers I made uh I made pretzel buns once. I've got a uh, video on that, but I haven't made actual pretzels out of them yet. Those are really good. Yeah, I like the way they uh, like the way they turned out. Pretzels seem very much up my alley. Yeah, like they are good. Like I said, I haven't made actual pretzel pretzels, but made pretzel rolls a few times and uh, did a video on them. A little messy when you uh because you have to you make your buns and let them rise a bit and then you boil them in uh like a third of a third or half cup of baking soda in a pot of water and uh you boil them that's what gives them that chewy kind of skin on them before you bake them and boiling that uh boiling the uh Baking soda, you end up with white stuff all over the top of your stove. But it wipes right off. It ain't that big of a deal. Uh, it's called the Ultimate Cast Iron Cookbook. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember the exact title. It was, you know, Cast Iron Cookbook. But beyond that, I couldn't couldn't think it. Uh, made soft pretzels on your channel. I did. I have tried to make pretzels a couple of times, but I can never get the damn things pretzeled right. I mean, they end up end up uh just kind of lumps and knots and things like that so i pretty much stick with the uh with the pretzel rolls if i'm going to do something like that ah. needs more water Barnes and Noble sells them. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember the exact title of it offhand. Lid don't want to go back on there. Little ring thingies in the way. Anyway, uh, well, we're getting close to the end here. 54 minutes. We'll go a few minutes more and wrap this up for the day. Uh, let me think. What's the date? The 16th of this month is a Tuesday. I'm not going to be able to do a show. I've got some training at work, and uh, that'll be in the afternoon. So I'll end up having to go into that, and by the time I get back, I'll be pretty well shot because uh, I have to work the night before. Get home, sleep fast for a couple oil couple of hours hopefully go back in and uh it just isn't going to work out to, to do a show on the 16th but next week should be the 9th i think so we'll be doing a show next week and uh should work out like i said but the 16th 
you know, I'll probably not be doing a show. Uh, for some reason, you have a craving for chicken boiled in 10W40 in an old ball jar. Yeah, that's uh, and doing it like that, I mean, it's going to absorb about a third of that oil by the time you're done. That's going to be, that would be just the greasiest, ungodliest, greasy chicken you ever come across. <clears throat> Cast Iron Chaos is 500 degree chicken between two preheated pans turned out well. Yeah, it looked like a be something worth trying. Like I said, I mean, there's so damn many things I want to try or want to make. I would be cooking 18 hours a day for the next six months to get caught up on all the things I'd want to do. I'll see you, Leanne. You feed the farmer and you should be happy for the rest of the night. Anyway, yeah, I think I'll wrap her up here. Say goodnight to Leanne and uh, Billy Lee. And, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, the 16th there won't be a show, but there will be one next week. Hopefully it'll be a little more cast iron related than making fun of really bad cooks and people faking things on YouTube. But uh, I'll see you guys then. I hope you enjoyed the show. And I'll, you know, enjoy the rest of your evening. Night.